Welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church in our Kansas City, Kansas. I'm Mother Lori Lewis, the rector here at Trinity, as well as at Grace Episcopal Church in Winfield, Kansas. Also serving in the liturgy today is Deacon Karen Deal. She will proclaim the gospel and prepare the table for Holy Communion. This is our worship service for Sunday, February 14th, happens to be Valentine's Day, but it is also the last Sunday after of the season after Epiphany, or the last Sunday before Lent. So that means this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. This is a worship service of Holy Eucharist, right to from our Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. You can find a prayer book online, or you can download our worship booklet from our websites. But rest assured, all of the congregational responses will be on the screen for you. Please allow the beauty of this worship to carry you if you are at all unfamiliar with it. Let us begin with our opening salutation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in Canticle 13 for our song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us hear from the Word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings, beginning in the second chapter, in the first verse. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, 
as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 50. We will pray it together in unison. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then
Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We come together in love, the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a lot of things in the air today for this sermon. We've got Valentine's Day floating out there. And I'll tell you, I really don't have a Valentine's connection for you. But we have... Uh, Lent around the corner, so that's floating down th around there. We're, we're getting ready to uh, have Ash Wednesday and dive into this penitential season. Also, in the air, the atmosphere around this sermon is that this is my first sermon since the news of my departure from Grace and Trinity to accept the call as rector to St. Stephen's in Wichita became public. That's probably been on my mind the most as I've prayed over and meditated to prepare for this sermon. This being the last Sunday before Lent, every year, no matter when it falls on the calendar, we have the reading of the Transfiguration of Christ. Now this year, being the year of the Gospel of Mark, we get Mark's version of that story. Mark, we've talked about before, is short, sweet, to the point. In fact, Mark wasn't written to be read. Mark was composed to be memorized and spoken. It was the first of the Gospels composed, and so it definitely came in a time when there was a lot of persecution, and so being caught with a piece of paper could have meant death. So memorizing this gospel so that you could tell the good news of Jesus Christ without physical evidence. In Mark's gospel, this reading, this section telling us of the transfiguration is right in the middle. It's a pivot point in the telling of the life and ministry of Jesus. I've mentioned several times now that Mark's gospel highlights the breaking of boundaries. The gospel opens with the baptism of Christ when the heaven is ripped apart. The boundary between heaven and earth is crossed and the Holy Spirit is set loose. So I'm trying to think each week, how is a boundary being broken? So in the transfiguration, we have that, that obvious boundary of heaven and earth again. Because it's like they, they go up on the mountain and that curtain is pulled away. They're in the presence of God's kingdom. There, the disciples 
Peter, James, and John see Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. So that boundary is clearly broken. But I thought this week of some other boundaries. There's the boundary between Jesus' active ministry, his teaching, his preaching, his healing. His active ministry has come before this point in Mark's gospel. And after this pivot point, after he is transfigured on the mountain, he begins the road towards his crucifixion. So the boundary between ministry and preparing for death is crossed in this reading. Then for the disciples, it occurred to me there's a boundary broken for them. Up to this point, they at least thought they understood. In fact, this reading today starts with six days later, that phrase. Well, it's six days after Peter declared Jesus was the Messiah, when Jesus said, who do you think I am? They thought they understood. And now on this mountain, it's at least very clear to Peter, James, and John that they do not understand. In fact, the next verse after where this week's gospel lesson ends. So this this lesson ends with, And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves. This is the next verse. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what the rising from the dead meant. So they recognize, Peter, James, and John recognize they are in new territory. They have crossed a boundary from understanding to now being very perplexed. So now let's look at that mountaintop experience in a little more detail. Jesus takes only Peter, James, and John, takes them up the mountain. Jesus, I believe, knows what's about to happen, so he does want them to see. When they get up there, Jesus is transformed into something so bright they can hardly look at him. They see Elijah and they see Moses, and they're perplexed. Really, Peter shouting out, well, it's good that we're here. We should build some booths so that we can honor you all, a booth for you and a booth for Elijah and a booth for Moses. I think it's really Peter saying, I don't know what to do with this. So let's just sit and be still in this moment and and be present. And that's actually, that's actually something that I know I've preached before on this Sunday, the last Sunday before Lent, is, is to be present, to focus now, to not get ahead of ourselves and start planning what we're giving up or, or whatever is coming for Lent, but to be present in this moment. That's what Peter wants to do, but it's really because he's terrified and confused. But what he does know is this is the Messiah that he has just proclaimed six days before. He recognizes this glowing, bright Jesus as the Messiah he's looking for. But the Messiah we get comes on another mountain. The mountain where we will find Jesus at the end of Lent on Good Friday hanging on a cross in the dark because God turns off the sun from grief. That's the Messiah we get. This is the Messiah we want. We want that glowing sign, that neon sign that says, yes, this is the Son of God. In fact, the sign was glowing so much they heard the voice. They heard God's voice say, this is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. That's what we want. We want something that's so obvious that we know the right thing to do, that we know what's next. But What we really have is a Messiah who gives up all power, 
to die. We don't know what to do with that sometimes. Transitions are hard. Transitions are scary. But transitions are necessary. Looking at the story of Elijah and Elisha, we can see the promise that God is present, that God's spirit is in that transition. In the transitions from the mountain in which Jesus is transfigured, the transition in the heart of the disciples is only just beginning. They know they don't understand. But God is present in that moment. So as we walk together through these next few weeks, as we walk towards the transition to a new ministry that God is calling grace and Trinity to carry out, we can know that God is present in that transition that the Holy Spirit has been walking this path all along, guiding us to this moment. I loved particularly the joy that people have expressed to me since hearing the news of my new call. It has not been times full of sorrow. It's been joy knowing that grace and trinity are at a point when God is ready for you to do something different. And knowing that God wants me to do something different. God is present in every transition. Let us follow the Spirit and know that the road is going to be different And we may not fully understand, but with faith, we'll carry forward. Amen. Let us join together and profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. February 14th, 2021, the last Sunday after Epiphany, the Transfiguration, and Sunday before Lent, the prayers of the people. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We pray for the Right Reverend Kathleen Bascom, our bishop in the Diocese of Kansas. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Belgium, Luxembourg, 
and the Netherlands. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, we pray for Bethany House and a garden. As Elijah and Elisha journeyed from Bethel to Jericho and from Jericho to Jordan, may we always be found in pursuit of your leading, O Lord of hosts. The Lord has called from the rising of the sun to its setting. Grant us also a double measure of Elijah's spirit for the doing of your will, that from one generation to another, the name of the Lord will be praised. Our God will come and will not keep silence. As you have shown in our hearts this epiphany season, so shine forth in our lives as we exercise our intellect, reason, and wisdom in service to Christ. The Lord is called from the rising of the sun to its setting. We ask that in all our teaching and ministrations we may proclaim not ourselves or our narrow perspectives, but Jesus, for you have shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of your glory in the face of Christ our Lord. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Heal our sick, Lord Christ, remembering especially those for whom our prayers are now offered and make them to be signs of your restoring presence. The people may offer their petitions. The Lord is called from the rising of the sun to its setting. As you transfigured Jesus on the mount and made him to appear with Elijah and Moses, so transfigure us in the company of those who serve you, interceding especially this day for those with whom we share in mission. Transform us also that we may serve your purpose in the world. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Again, we welcome you. I'm so glad you have found our worship online this week. Please, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, clicking the bell so that you're notified whenever we upload a video. And then if you are a Facebook user, please find us on Facebook, follow us, um, like us, all of, all of those things that help us do the technological evangelism that helps us to spread the good news. If you are financially able, we ask that you prayerfully consider financially supporting the kingdom work we are doing through Grace and Winfield and Trinity in Ark City. You can mail an old-fashioned check through the old-fashioned mail to our P.O. boxes, which you can find on our website. 
or you can make a, uh, an online donation using a credit card through our diocesan webpage. Soon we will have our own means for receiving those credit card donations online and hopefully in a uh, fee-free way. As I mentioned earlier, Ash Wednesday is right uh, a few days away, and we will um, be presenting our Ash Wednesday worship services online through these same formats. So um, if you've subscribed and clicked for notify, you'll um, be told as soon as those are uploaded. So those will um, be available Wednesday. And uh, for this Lent, we are not... Um, putting together our own Lenten study, but we are participating in the diocesan Lenten study. It's a, um, it will be uh, conducted over Zoom, and it is a study of a book by Amy Jill Levine. And I'm so excited that uh, the diocese is putting this together um, so that all of the parishes can participate in that and um, still keep our sanity with all the extra things we need to do uh, this Lent while we're still in a pandemic. So um, there should be a link right here um, for that or in the description of this video. We'll have information on that uh, for you. It is our custom every week to pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. I invite you to join with me. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your children as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we prepare for Holy Communion in this time when we are not together to physically receive the bread or the wine of communion, we will come together around this table along with the great cloud of witnesses and we will receive this sacrament spiritually in our hearts. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we continue with our great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer C. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now let us pray together to receive the sacrament spiritually in our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you physically in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. We continue with our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.